The requirement came about because the depth of the riverbed wasn't deep enough for two stages of our operation. The first stage being the rotation of the barge after the hull has been loaded out on top of it. Our stability calculations require a certain draft and for the barge and the hull together to, to function during this rotation, uh, which if you can imagine this is a 400 foot long barge, so the depth of the, of the river would have to be uh, just right for us to not hit any ground or have any problems. We'll be installing the jack wire one at a time. One spool will take it all the way to the hull. Then once we reach the hull, there's another wire spooler that'll grab the wire and take it the rest of the way under the hull. We used uh, two 900 ton strand jacks with 16 inches of stroke. Uh, the way strand jacks works is they got a diaphragm cable, 54 in each jack, and they have wedges which lock up the cable. They have wedges in the base and in the top of the jack. When you extend the cylinder, the top wedges pull the wire through the whole jack. Then when you retract the cylinder, the bottom wedges are holding the strands tight. So it's like a monkey climbing on a rope. It's a very subtle dance between ballasting of the barge and pulling of the hole by Mammut. Using their strand jacks, they're, they're gonna slowly pull and then stop and let the ballasting crew come in and adjust the, the barge to make sure that everything's in balance. We have only a 20 millimeter envelope of displacement at the point of contact between the barge and the key. to transfer some of the load of the structure back on land after we've done the rotation to move the barge closer to the bow legs so that we can allow for room for the stern legs to come down. To be able to do that, we need something on land that can support the, the unbalanced load. And that's where we're using Mammut's SPMTs to handle that. We've attached the outrigger frame to the back of the stern uh, to, to transfer that load onto the SPMTs. This is our tidal monitoring system along with our tank monitoring system. Here on the side you can see key height in real time, so the tide going up and down. And we can check uh, what tanks are being pumped in and out of. For the push out, um, when a heavy load like this stays on the skid track for a while, you get a lot more friction. So we use some extra two 600 ton jacks, one on each side, with 24 inches of stroke. We'll 
use the Mammut trailers along with some cranes uh, and our winches to move the entire assembly out away from the dock. We're going to move everything out enough distance to clear the spud cans from the dock. At a certain point, once, once the spud cans begin to take on water and fill up, you begin to see the load change and Mammut can monitor that on their SPMTs very quickly how it begins to lift off. So I think we've gone up about two meters now, or a meter and a half, uh, from where we were originally. And now what we're doing is letting the legs stabilize and take on as much load as possible without detaching the barge completely because we want to be sure that the legs are stable enough uh, and that there isn't going to be any tilting or punch through at the bottom of the riverbed. The idea today was to get the, the whole clear of the dock so that we can lower the two stern legs. There's about six stages during the exit procedure that we have to monitor our mooring and then bring in an extra tug at the end to very carefully control how we pull out.